Baldi's Basics is a game that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. For those who aren't, it's a meta-horror experience disguised as a 90s-styled educational game. It blew up after its release in 2018, and it involves a teacher named Baldi chasing you around a school because you're bad at math. This year, Baldi's Basics turns 6 years old, which is a fact I'm sure a lot of you aren't comfortable with. But despite how long the game's been around, it doesn't take me telling you for it to be obvious it hasn't been in the spotlight for nearly that long. At this point, the game's been mostly forgotten about, despite being still in active development. What happened? How did we all collectively forget about this game? In this video, we're gonna take a retrospective look back at Baldi's basics through the years, and at the end, we'll try to answer that very question. In the late 1990s, it became increasingly more common for people to own computers in their home. As a result, a genre of computer game known as edutainment or educational entertainment games became widespread. Within this genre, sometimes popular existing video game franchises would receive edutainment games of their own. The one most relevant to the topic at hand, though, is Sonic's Schoolhouse. In October 1996, a company named BAP Interactive was in the process of developing an entertainment game called Answer Hunt. During this, the company's production partner approached Sega, and through an agreement decided it would be transformed into a Sonic-themed game. The game taught math, spelling, and reading, and also had an outside playground area where different puzzle minigames could be played. In order to play and access all of these facets of the game, the player would have to navigate a fully 3D environment that felt reminiscent to early FPS games. In fact, apparently the Sega CEO at the time literally called it Doom for Kids. The aesthetics of the game were very distinct and memorable, and would later become the main inspiration for the general feel of Baldi's basics over 20 years later. But before that, we have to talk about the game's developer, Micah McGonagall. In around the late 2000s, when he was 11 or 12, he created a short comic series called Baltimore, which was the first appearance of Baldi as a character. As he grew older, he had a definite fascination for video games, Nintendo, and retro stuff in general. Will I win? I don't think so. His game-making aspirations began with a development tool for the DSi known as Petite Computer. It was a rather limiting method of making games, which he acknowledged in a post on the first game he ever made in Unity. From that point forward, he'd stick with Unity for making games. Fast forward to March of 2018, Micah decided to join a game jam being hosted on itch.io called the Meta Game Jam. For those unfamiliar with the concept of a game jam, it's essentially a competition where a developer or group of developers are tasked with making a game within a limited amount of time. In this specific instance, the goal was to make a meta game, or in other words, a game about games. For Micah, the solution to this prompt was obvious. Take his childhood characters and insert them into a Sonic's Schoolhouse-inspired edutainment game. And thus we finally arrive at Baldi's Basics. Welcome to Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. That's me! Immediately upon starting the game, you meet the game's titular character, Baldi. A poster on the wall describes the school rules. As a nod to the competition criteria, the poster ends with the ironic, no fourth wall breaks. From there, you can enter a room and use the You Can Think pad to answer math problems, collecting a notebook in the process. After answering the questions correctly, Baldi rewards you with a quarter, teaching you about the inventory and item collection systems. If you try to exit the area early, Baldi's voice tells you, You need to collect two notebooks before you can use these doors. So you have to go do the other one. This time, something goes wrong, though, because the third question is unintelligible gibberish, and it's literally impossible to answer correctly. Problem three. Plus. Times. 
equals... After getting the question wrong, Baldi's expression in the corner turns to anger, and he leaves behind one of several preset messages giving you a hint that something has gone terribly wrong. A slapping noise can now be heard in the distance, slowly closing in on your location. If you exit the room and look down the hall, Baldi is chasing you, and every slapping noise that you hear is actually his hand hitting the ruler as he grows closer to you. From there, you have to navigate the school and use items and strategy in order to get all seven notebooks before Baldi catches you. The problem is that every single notebook has that impossible question, and he gets faster and angrier with every incorrect question answered. Thus, there's an underlying terror in every milestone you arrive at whilst progressing in the game. The game also lets you know that Baldi can hear every single door you open, which means although he isn't always aware of your position, basically any important action you make will alert him of it. Baldi's not the only thing you have to worry about either, since there are other threats to deal with that impede your progress. The principal wanders randomly, watching to see if you break any rules, and then sends you to detention if he catches you. 15 seconds. Detention for you. When will you learn? From there, you're stuck in the room for an amount of time that gets longer every time you're sent there again, and Baldi starts closing in on you from wherever he was at the time. Then there's Playtime, who forces you to play jump rope with her, which obviously slows you down quite a bit. The bully will spawn along random pathways and block your path if you don't give him something, but the principal can actually send him to detention for bullying in rare occasions. Give me something great. I'll take that. It's mine now. There's this sock dude named Arts and Crafters that just kind of screams at you sometimes. And then there's Gotta Sweep, which is a giant broom that speedily sends you along whatever path it happens to be taking. In its base form, the game is honestly really charming and fun, with a lot of dynamic characters and items to play around with while running away from Baldi and collecting notebooks. The game isn't actually that long though, especially since the map never changes, so after a few tries you're probably going to remember where everything is. The main thing that contributes to strategizing in this game is knowing what all the items do, so I'll briefly go over the ones in the game so far. The Bee Soda is a canned beverage that when opened can be used to push back any character until it meets a wall. The Zesty Bar refills your stamina, pretty simple. The Lock makes it so any of these swinging yellow doors can be closed for a decent amount of time. The Principal's Keys could be used to open certain doors, though it generally wasn't very useful in this version of the game. The Quarter can be used to buy other items from vending machines. Baldi's least favorite tape is an item that can be used to disorient and distract Baldi for 30 seconds since it makes him effectively deaf, meaning he can't hear any sounds you make. And so far, those are all of the implemented items. After you figure out how the game actually works and you get to a point where you collect all seven notebooks, this happens. Congratulations! You found all seven notebooks! Now all you need to do is... Get out while you still can! So, yeah, the game doesn't actually end once you're done collecting, you still have to actually escape the school. If the player was paying attention to the environment around them as they were playing the game before, they should already have an approximate idea of where an exit is relative to them. Once you actually find an exit though, it disappears from right in front of you, and the entire environment turns into something only a little less scary than real school. During this time, Baldi's speed will be tremendous, so if you decided to take that last notebook while he was close to you, or didn't have any plans to use items to impede him, you were probably going to lose by default. Once you actually found the final exit, you'd win the game quite unceremoniously. And that is Baldi's Basics in a nutshell. Unfortunately, Baldi's Basics would lose to Farfalle OS getting second place in the competition. I mean, 
A game about game development in a competition where the goal was to make a game about games? How could you top that? Well, you could have your game absolutely explode in popularity whilst Farfalle OS remains as the victor of an obscure competition no one remembers anymore, because that's exactly what Baldi's did. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye and welcome to, um, something. Baldi's Basics Baldi's version. Basics in Education and Learning. Yeah, so if you know anything about what tends to trend on YouTube in terms of indie games, then you would have been able to guess that Baldi's Basics was a recipe for success. Seemingly innocent media that ends up being a horror game or having horror undertones is like exactly what people eat up on this website. The game pretty much blew up overnight. So far, all of the features I was describing a bit ago were from version 1.2 of the game, which was the currently released version around the time the game had its initial popularity boom. However, an entirely new secret ending was added to the game in version 1.3, along with some new items, a new character, and an endless mode. In order to get the new secret ending, you'd have to purposefully get all of the questions wrong which is really difficult since Baldi enrages for a brief period of time. You have to constantly keep a large gap in distance between him and try to strategize around him not being able to hear you. Getting this ending requires a lot of patience, but if you did manage to do it, you were greeted by an entirely different ending screen and Baldi's office. Once you enter the office, you see a distorted Baldi and a new strange character whose name, or lack of a name, is Null. He has some interesting stuff to say, so I'll let him say it. Look, I have something kind of important to say. Destroy the game before it's too late. You know, I'm not someone trapped inside the game. That would be ridiculous. No, I can't talk normally. I, it's corrupted. Just close the program. Destroy it. Never come back. I will be honest with you, this ending doesn't really make sense, nor do I think it really means anything. To me, the entire premise of the dialogue and this character feels like a parody poking fun at other pieces of media like this that try to hide ambiguous lore within their gameplay. One thing I do think is interesting is that the game does hint at how you're supposed to find Null, because the voice that speaks to you in the ending And the voice that interrupts Baldi in the climax is him. A few months after the initial release of Baldi's Basics, Micah made a Reddit post on r slash game dev expressing interest in putting together a Kickstarter to turn it into a full game. The comments were all very positive and supportive, expressing interest in both a full game and a Kickstarter campaign for it. Thus, on July 24th, 2018, the Kickstarter page went live with a final goal of $50,000. On that same day, he released a demo for Baldi's Basics Field Trip, which included a proof of concept camping level. I want you to keep the fire going. Go out into the woods, collect firewood, then bring it back to Fire. The gameplay was super simple. You had a small forest map to go around collecting sticks to keep a fire lit for three minutes. If it went out, Baldi would chase you until the game ended. And that was basically it. But again, it was just a proof of concept for a larger thing. On August 18th, the camping demo was updated to version 1.1 as a method of bringing more attention to the Kickstarter, which was ending pretty soon. The update added three more characters, two from the original game, the Bully and the Sock Puppet, and one new character, a giant cloud dude. In this game, the Bully would take your sticks, and the Sock Puppet Arts and Crafters would loudly scream if you were to go too far on a certain point of the map, and then teleport you back to the center. Cloudcopter, the new character, would actually attempt to blow out your fire. This made the fire go out significantly faster, and the only way to stop it was to be close enough to scare him away before he actually succeeds. There were a few minor additions aside from what I just mentioned, but the extra characters were the main thing. 
and it seemed like this update did accomplish its goal of bringing more attention to the Kickstarter, because by August 23rd, not only had the Kickstarter goal been met, but it was exceeded by over $10,000. Now that the goal had been met, Micah decided he would work on the full game and one final major patch for the original game, that being version 1.4. Around September, he decided to focus on version 1.4 before moving on to developing the full game. It wasn't an insane update or anything like that, but was more so to add one more coat of polish to the game before deciding he was done with it entirely. In November, the update came out. And although the game would receive minor hotfixes and additions over the years following this, this was the last major update that Baldi's Basics would ever get. From here on out, it would be known as Baldi's Basics Classic. Over the next five months, Micah would be hard at work developing the fundamentals for entirely new systems and mechanics for the full version of Baldi's Basics. Some major features were teased, such as randomly generated maps and multiple floors. And just like that, Baldi's Basics reached its one-year anniversary. To celebrate, Micah released a special edition of the classic version, Baldi's Basics Birthday Bash. The gameplay was functionally very similar to the original Baldi's Classic, though all of the items have been replaced with presents that give you something random from the item pool, and they also don't appear in set places like they did before. Speaking of items, a new item was actually added as well, the Big Old Boots. They last 15 seconds after being used and allow you to freely move through Gotta Sweep and First Prize. First Prize is the character that was added in version 1.3, and it's basically like the sweeping dude, but a little more controllable. The functionality of Big Ol' Boots might seem kind of lame, but it has a lot more uses later on. In terms of cosmetic changes, there's now balloon sprites floating around all over the place. The cafeteria has a giant cake in the middle of it, and some of the characters are now wearing party hats as well. There's a few other minor cosmetic differences as well, but the main reason why you would play this over the other version of the game was because of the two new endings. For the normal ending, the route changed slightly, because you're forced to visit the exit at the cafeteria last. This is because, rather than escaping the school, you actually get to have a party in the cafeteria once you beat the game. All of the characters gather round as you blow out the candle on top of the giant cake. For some reason, the game breaks after this happens. Everything goes dark and a bunch of really strange stuff can be seen if you continue wandering around the place. One of the new rooms in this area actually contains a puzzle, and apparently, these floating, bugged baldy sprites are called bald loons. If you go around the map counting how many of each type there are and enter the numbers in, you gain access to a room that basically adds absolutely nothing, so it's an almost worthless puzzle. However, these weird red glitched baldy sprites start appearing all over the map until eventually your screen gets overrun by them. Then all of a sudden, the game kind of just ends. Well, that was weird. What about the other ending? Similar to the original game, the second ending is more of a secret that has to do with the character Null once again. There are two ways to get this ending, one much easier than the other, but probably not the intended route. In Birthday Bash, all of the vending machines from the original game were replaced with crazy item machines, which dispense a random item when fed a quarter as opposed to something set like before. You have a chance to obtain a new item that was added, the Teleportation Teleporter, from these machines. If you use it in the schoolhouse after it turns dark, it teleports you near the principal's office, where Null is waiting for you. The other method is to type the code 04119, which just inserts a teleporter into your inventory for free. It can even be done multiple times. From there, Null says more of the same random, kind of loosely related stuff as before, but also references the fact that this game is a demo for some greater project. The next few months were spent making minor changes to Baldi's Classic, while still working on the development of the full game. In May and June, he teased that many of the main features were implemented, and characters were now being added. At this point, the game was in a decently playable state, and Micah was considering finally putting out a demo. Fast forward a few months, and on August 12, 2019, the demo was released for everyone. Even though it was incomplete, it still came with a massive amount of new features and mechanics. Earlier, I teased the game having multiple floors and randomly generated levels, but the demo doesn't really include this. 
Instead, the demo uses a specific map, and the elevator mechanic isn't really present as intended, but it is still sort of there, since that's where you start and end the demo. Even disregarding that, a lot of other neat new things were added around the map, like conveyor belts on the ground that make you move faster in one direction, lockdown doors, hiding in blue lockers, and even a spinny thing outside, in the new playground area. It also seems like the actual math problems in the notebooks were removed and the inventory was expanded from 3 to 5 slots. Arguably the coolest feature of the new game mechanics that actually made it in are the random events. The demo came with five of these, which includes Broken Ruler, Flood, Fog, Test Procedure, and Party. To explain the events briefly, Broken Ruler makes Baldi's ruler break, to which he will make no noise while approaching you, but also cannot actually harm you until the ruler gets fixed, even if he catches you. Flood causes water to rise and makes all characters move slower, but it also has the added benefit of opening all the doors so Baldi can't hear you. Fog does exactly what you think it does, simply obscuring you and the other character's vision temporarily. Test Procedure causes all five lockdown doors around the map to begin closing after a 10 second countdown. From there, the player and characters will be temporarily unable to pass through these areas until the time is up. Finally, we have Party, which simply causes a party to occur in the principal's office. You could attempt to use this time to collect notebooks while everyone is distracted, but actually attending the party gives you a chance of getting one of three valuable items, two of which are new and I've yet to talk about, though this seems a good a time as ever to do so. The two new items added are the grappling hook and an apple for Baldi. The grappling hook allows you to quickly traverse to another location by shooting the hook, which drags you along with it once it lands. The apple is basically a get out of jail free card, since if Baldi catches you while you have it, he actually doesn't end your game. He even gets distracted for a pretty long time. Overall, the demo for the full Baldi's basics was looking really cool. It didn't lose out on any of what made the original game fun and honestly seemed to elevate it to greater heights. In September, version 1.1 of the demo was released, which didn't add any major changes and was mostly a bug fix update. In November, the Kickstarter supporters received an exclusive version of the demo that contained a lot of the features that we would be seeing later on, which would get updated twice over the coming months. Now, since that demo is technically exclusive for Kickstarter supporters and is behind some kind of paywall, I am not going to actually go into detail or show it because that would be kind of messed up. Eventually, 2019 would come to an end, and Micah would actually express dissatisfaction with the amount of work he was able to put out that year. He took it as a sign that he should enact more discipline on himself in the following year, which for the first few months consisted of continued development of the full game, as well as the previously mentioned updates to the Kickstarter demo. And just like that, on March 31st, Baldi's Basics turned two years old. And the second public demo released. The Challenges Demo. This demo consisted of three challenges on three predetermined maps, including the Speedy Challenge, Stealthy Challenge, and Grapple Challenge. Before getting to the specifics of the challenges themselves, I'd like to talk about some new features that weren't present in the previous public demo. To start with some quality of life additions, a baldy head now appears in the bottom left corner if you make any action that alerts him to your position. There's also a water fountain structure in the game now, which replenishes your sprint bar when used. In terms of new mechanics, there's a new type of door that requires a quarter every time you want to pass through it. There's also a new character present, Mrs. Pomp, who's another teacher at the school. Basically, the way she works is she'll hop around the halls and remind you to attend her class in two minutes if she finds you. If you successfully attend the class, you'll gain plus 100 YTPs, which we currently don't know anything about, and you'll be able to leave immediately. If you don't find the room and attend the class on time, though, she'll pathfind towards the player the next time they enter a room, blocking the exit. Then she'll scream at you and drag you all the way to the classroom, leaving you vulnerable and then keeping you there for 15 seconds. All of these new features, in one way or another, are implemented into the gameplay of the actual challenges that make up the demo. The first one, being the speedy challenge, is pretty simple in that it just makes you and Baldi much faster than you normally would be. No other characters spawn and you have 25 notebooks to collect throughout the map, so the objective and strategy is pretty cut and dry. 
The stealthy challenge involves an item I've not actually talked about yet, that being the dirty chalk eraser. This item makes a screen of chalk dust clouds around you after being used, and hides you from the line of sight of characters. The premise of the challenge is that you've snuck into the school after hours, and the principal has been duplicated, somehow, so there's like a million of him wandering around. Baldi can't actually chase you in this mode because he's stuck in the principal's office, but if the principal sees you at all, he'll basically just chase you until he can place you in a guaranteed death chamber, since he'll give you detention. As you might imagine, you need to be pretty stealthy for this one. If you thought the premise for that challenge was absurd though, let me read this next one. Your legs might be broken, but thankfully you're equipped with an infinite use grappling hook. See if you can outwit Baldi and his friends when this is your only way to move. Okay. As you might imagine, this challenge is kinda scuffed, especially since there's actually three other characters to deal with too, including Gotta Sweep, The Bully, and Mrs. Pomp. Aside from the usual bug fix update occurring soon after launch, which was on April 3rd, that was essentially all the challenge demo had to offer. However, there is one thing I forgot to mention. You see, the challenge demo wasn't the only thing that dropped on the game's second anniversary. We also finally got the reveal for the name of the full game. On June 12th, 2020, 804 days after the release of Baldi's Basics, version 0.1 of Baldi's Basics Plus was released on itch.io, Game Jolt, and Steam Early Access. It had taken years, but the full game was now in a state playable enough for the public to try it out. The challenges, field trips, endless mode, explorer mode, and the main mode, which is now hide and seek, were all included. I didn't really say this outright earlier, but the explicit horror in the main gameplay of Baldi's Basics has been toned down, though he has said he plans on adding more horror elements closer to the end of the full game's development. The original game was designed around deceiving the player on first playthrough, which wouldn't really work in the full version considering everyone playing would be very likely to already know what was up. This is why the math problems were removed, and why Baldi is simply playing hide and seek with you now. There were a handful of new character additions and a new item, though most of the new characters had already been seen in the Kickstarter exclusive demo. Firstly, we have Beans, who occasionally spits out bubblegum which can obscure the edges of your vision and slows you down tremendously for 10 seconds. It also works on other characters, not just you. Another new added character in the release was The Test, which apparently made a sort of cameo appearance in Birthday Bash. The specifics of his AI are actually kinda complicated, but it basically boils down to if you look at him too often when he shows up and he runs into you, he'll blind you, adding a thick black fog to your vision that doesn't affect the other characters. And he also messes with the lights. Then we have Chockles, who shows up as a drawn face on the chalkboard of classrooms that you happen to enter sometimes, and he'll slowly materialize if you don't leave the classroom fast enough. If he finishes this progress, he rotates the room all crazy-like and attracts Baldi to your location. Oh, yeah, and the cloud dude from the field trip demo is back. He blows wind down halls. The item that was added is a portal that allows you to teleport through walls, which is honestly a pretty neat thing to be able to do and can open up a lot of strategy options. I actually forgot to add a new event to the script, but it's called Mystery Room, and basically a door spawns somewhere on the map for about 90 or 120 seconds, and it has a chance to contain a rare item in it. If it wasn't obvious, Baldi's Basics Plus also includes a lot of features that we've either not seen before or were previously on dedicated demos. The field trips are here, the challenges are here, and there's even Endless Mode and Explorer Mode. The Endless Mode might not sound too interesting, but Baldi actually speeds up over time and getting a notebook slows him down, which means it becomes an actually pretty invigorating endurance test. The Explorer mode is pretty much the complete opposite of that, where Baldi isn't chasing you at all. It is meant to explore, to have a chill experience. The next major update, version 0.2, would release following five updates to 0.1 a few months later on September 12th. This update would add a major new mechanic to the game, which was something to do with the YTP thing I mentioned earlier. In this game, YTP stands for You Thought Points. There are many ways throughout the game to earn them over time, but the important thing is what you actually get to use them for. A new character, Johnny, 
has his own item shop, which allows you to bring items with you before you start the game in exchange for the points that you've been accumulating over time. This update also saw the reintegration of First Prize and the addition of the Gravity Chaos event, which flips everything upside down. An item balance change to the Grappler was made, making it now have five uses. After just two minor updates to version 0.2, version 0.3 would be released on November 21st. Surprisingly, it didn't actually offer that many super impactful changes, but there were still a few. One that was pretty important was Micah's decision to overhaul the field trip games, but the biggest change was to the camping one. It no longer utilized a 3D environment for a fetch quest, but now involves solving math problems on a time limit but with a twist, which I think is more in line with the themes of the game anyways. A really nice quality of life feature that was missing before was added as well, that being the ability to save and quit between floors. Finally, the ending sequence was replaced, but it's still a placeholder for what was actually meant for the final game. You beat my game. You learned a lot. It's good you came, cause you were taught. Before moving on from this, there's a few items that I haven't talked about yet, a lot of which I missed out on because they were implemented from the Kickstarter exclusive demo. So I figured now was a perfectly good time to talk about what I missed. The alarm clock is an item that can be set to go off on a certain time interval, and it will attract Baldi to come check it out since it's very loud. This item was added all the way back in Classic 1.3, but it was a rare item and I kind of just forgot to talk about it. Another item from Baldi's Basics Classic that I just kind of completely forgot to talk about is the WD No Squee, which is basically a spray that you can put on doors to make them not make noise when you open them. It doesn't just work on doors though, because you can actually also use it on lockers. The principal's whistle makes the principal very quickly approach your location, which can be used to remove the bully from blocking a path, or it can even be used strategically to put yourself in detention to escape Baldi, assuming of course that that option is better. The faculty name tag tricks a vast majority of characters in the game into thinking you're part of the school faculty, as the name suggests. Here are all the characters whose normal activities will be prevented if this item is in your possession. Finally, a while back I mentioned the big ol' boots being more interesting later on, and now they are. Now you could also move at a normal speed on the opposite side for conveyor belts, negate cloudy copters, wind, and the whirlpools during flood events, and Mrs. Pomp won't be able to drag you to her class if you're late. For now, that's it for items in Baldi's Basics Plus. Now, during the lifespan of version 0.3, something really, really strange happened to the development of the game. It slowed down tremendously, slower than it had ever been before. Updates on the Kickstarter page were also reduced to a minimum. Why did this happen? On March 31st, when the third anniversary rolled around, he posted a video explaining exactly why. To summarize, basically the consequences of poor planning and rushing out previous updates had finally caught up to him, becoming enough of an issue that they needed to be addressed. He had everything planned out in his head, but it was difficult to actually put that into action, so he decided to put together his own personal game design roadmap document, detailing exactly how, what, and when progress on the game would be done going forward. Another big thing that he was working on during this time was developing a built-in level editor to fix a lot of the issues that could be seen in the endless mode. It would also make developing the rest of the game significantly easier. But as you might imagine, building a level editor for a game would probably take a long ass time. The most exciting bit of information revealed in this video though had nothing to do with Baldi's Basics Plus. It was an entirely new game. Or perhaps it wasn't new at all. Education and learning. That's me. 1,665 days after the release of Baldi's Basics, Micah would release Baldi's Basics Classic Remastered on October 21st, 2022. Using the framework and level editor that he had built from the ground up for the development of Baldi's Basics Plus, Micah had remade the original map and gameplay loop to bring together the ultimate way to experience the original game everyone knew. It came with three ways to play, including classic style, party style, and demo style. Classic style was exactly what you'd expect. 
a faithful yet improved reimagining of the original gameplay. Party Style was a remake of the Birthday Bash version of the game, and finally, Demo Style combined aspects of both Classic Remastered and Plus together for a game that would ease people who were returning specifically for Classic Remastered into the experience that the full game had to offer. The ending of each game mode is pretty much the same, including the secret endings that include Null. Beating certain game modes will unlock fun settings which can be toggled before starting a game to add some spice to your gameplay experience. You might be wondering, since Classic and Party Style have secret endings, does Demo Style also have one? The answer is yes. Demo Style utilizes these math machines in every classroom with a notebook, but there's six bonus questions you can answer from them which give you a portal poster. If you use it in a specific secret spot, you get access to a ladder that takes you to the basement. If you explore for a bit, you'll eventually come across a faculty room that has Null in it. It's nothing special once again, just more ramblings about how you should destroy the game, blah blah blah. We've heard it all before. This isn't the end for Null though. If you beat any of the three styles with the fun settings that actually make the game harder, that being Mirror Mode, Lights Out, and Hard Mode, you get access to a secret fourth game mode. This new fourth secret mode was nicknamed Null Style. It was a mode that pit you against only Null, which acted as a slightly more difficult version of Baldi. There aren't any other characters around, it's just you versus him. If he happens to catch you, his jump scare is kind of terrifying, actually. Take a look. If you manage to get all seven notebooks, Null is waiting for you at the final exit. He's not going to let you leave, not without a fight. It's time for the first boss fight in Baldi's Basics history. It's rather simple since you just have to throw 10 items at him, with the gameplay and music slowly getting faster as you go along. But I think the fact that a secret boss fight with this character that we've been following for so many years was even included in the first place is pretty damn cool. Once you finally manage to hit him with the 10th and final object given to you, you're presented with a door in a black abyss. Entering the door will put you into an in-game recreation of Micah's office. Now, before you get any funny ideas, the notebook in here goes out of its way to specifically confirm this is not some meta moment and the developer is not, in fact, part of the game's lore. He does say, however, that the game will have its own story when version 1.0 of Plus releases, but it won't have anything to do with the quote-unquote story that came before it in previous games involving Null. In order to stay consistent with that statement and wrap up loose ends, Null shows up one more time, does like another minute or two of yapping, and then fucking dies. To wrap up the discussion on Classic Remastered, now Null is just completely gone from the game. Even if you try to reinstall or change your save files, every ending that he was present in before is just replaced with Baldi, and his voice doesn't even show up during the climax or after beating Classic Style anymore. Null Style even turns into Glitch Style instead. It seems like Baldi's Basics Remastered simply marks the end of Null as a character. By this point, we've kind of reached the inevitable end of consistent updates for the game. The rest of 22 came and went, and Micah once again apologized on Kickstarter in November for the lack of visible progress. Now, I'm not trying to beat down on him for any of this. In fact, I understand this feeling. I get it. Even as the days have gone by of me writing this script for the video, in my head I'm thinking, man, it's been a little too long since I've uploaded a video, hasn't it? Why is it so hard for me to just finish this faster? I've done it before. Why can't I now? In this way, me and Micah are all too similar. 
Admittedly, the project I've undertaken in making a video about his games is a lot easier than actually making the games, but either way, I think this whole thing kinda just speaks to the soul of any creative out there, which I'm sure includes many of you watching the video. I'm sure a lot of you understand. So the question I asked at the beginning of the video was, how did we all collectively forget about this game? Where did Baldi's Basics go? And I think the answer to the question is painfully simple. It never went anywhere to begin with. The game simply was not produced at the lightning speed that is demanded of developers with a hit indie project. Five Nights at Freddy's is probably the prime example on how speedily producing a game's subsequent sequels can have a massive positive effect on its overall popularity, especially with how these things tend to have an easier time trending on YouTube. Now, in case you can't tell, Scott Cawthon and Micah McGonagall are not the same person, so attempting to make any active comparison there doesn't really make any sense, but I'm sure you understand my point. And I'm not trying to make anyone here feel bad for not remembering Baldi's basics. I wouldn't blame you if the newer developments for Baldi's flew under your radar, because they did for me too. But hopefully, with this retrospective video, I was able to bring some nostalgia back for the people who enjoyed the game when it originally came out. And now, all of you know about the new stuff, even if you didn't before. As of October 2023, Micah has been steadily working on version 0.4 for Plus, even teasing a new character, and also he expressed his concerns about the funny business that Unity was getting up to last year. Is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! SQUIDWARD! The most recent update post was just last month, in which he showed off the full design and gameplay details of the new character, Dr. Reflex. However, I think I'll leave that final spoiler up to your imagination. Hi, this is a future Manexa. So, originally, this was the most recent post, but this came out like two days ago while I was editing. Basically, version 0.4 is confirmed to come out on February 26th or earlier, which is information I did not previously have access to. So, that's nice. And with that, we've reached the end of Baldi's journey thus far. And now we've also reached the end of this video's journey. I really enjoyed reminiscing and learning more about Baldi's basics. It was something I actually really enjoyed back when it first came out, so this video was a ton of fun to make. Obviously, I'll put Micah's socials and stuff in the description. You should definitely consider supporting the final stretch of his development in any way you possibly can. He's making a great game, as I'm sure you've all come to find out. Micah, if you're watching this, thank you for Baldi's Basics. Finally, if you had a good time, it would mean the world if you subscribed for more content like this and turned on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you want to support me further, $5 channel members get early access to new videos, and you can also follow my socials and join the community Discord server. That being said, that's going to be all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. I just realized I forgot to talk about the safety scissors. The, the, the thing you use to cut the rope when playtime is being in- Can I just put it at the end of the video?